Right everyone, what is going on? Buster Barnes here, bringing you my match preview for Chelsea's home game against Aston Villa in the Premier League, only two days after our game against Arsenal, so who knows what the squad is going to look like or what we can expect from Frank Lampard's Blues, but hopefully we can bounce back from that disappointing defeat against Arsenal and pick up the three points. As you guys know, I will be going through the team news and giving you guys my predicted lineup and my predicted scoreline as well, so do stay tuned for that. If you guys enjoy, please be sure to leave a like comment down below your lineup and score predictions as well i'd love to see what you guys think is going to happen or even just your general opinions on what's going on at chelsea at the moment and as always do subscribe for more chelsea fc content but before we get into the match preview as you guys do know i didn't actually upload a video and reacting to the Arsenal defeat, mainly because it was Boxing Day, you know, I was spending time with family, didn't really have that much time to record, and also, it was just a bit of a draining defeat, losing to Arsenal is never great, so um, yeah, I just thought I'd address it a little bit here, um, and to give you guys my thoughts on the player performances, um, to be honest, it wasn't great, I think we were all surprised that Reese James and Ben Chilwell were included, I was happy to see that, I think a lot of Chelsea fans were, however, maybe in hindsight we were all wondering, was Reese James maybe 100% to start? He didn't look his actual self in that game. Maybe he had a poor game or maybe his injury was playing a bit up. I'm not too sure. That's for, you know, the Chelsea um, backroom staff and Lampard and stuff to look at and got, I guess, trust what they go with because we don't know. We don't know what Reese James is saying. We don't know what the doctors are saying. Obviously, he was cleared to start. So, um... I guess, you know, that's just something that happened. He did give away a pen. It was a very soft pen, but to be honest, this was the type of game that whilst I think we deserve to lose this game, to be honest, I think Arsenal were the better team. Um, it was a game that still didn't really go away in some um, instances. Obviously, conceding a penalty... Shouldn't be conceding that, obviously giving away one, but, you know, it's an unfortunate goal. Xhaka's free kick goes, you know, misses nine times out of ten. Um, and then there was the Saki, you know, cross, which went in, which is very unfortunate. You see teams maybe score them once in the blue moon. So, um, yeah, an unfortunate game for us, but one I do think that we probably should have come out on the losing side for. Or maybe at least a draw. Obviously, we did see the club bounce back a bit and the changes made. hudson Doy really added something going forward. He was a big bright spot getting the assist for Abraham's goal. Jorginho missing a pen just to, you know, rub the salt in the wounds a little bit. Um, I don't really understand why Jorginho came on, um, to be honest. I mean, I was told that it was to control the game. Some people were saying that Kovacic didn't have a good game. I mean, I didn't really notice him, so maybe that's true. Um, and I guess you can't say that we weren't on the front foot for a lot of the second half. Um, we were on the front foot, actually, for a lot of the first half as well. But it was that sort of middle period from halfway um, onwards in the first half to sort of before halfway in the second half that Arsenal just had um, sort of luck go their way, but also some decent play. Um, I did say in my preview that I was worried about that game. I think a lot of fans maybe took it a bit more lightly than they should have, which is why my old video was named um, We Should Not Take This Lightly, because... Even though we should be beating Arsenal, they're not in good form. It's a London derby. They're bound to win the game eventually. You know, some of the youngsters were put on. Um, I'm not saying we shouldn't have won it, but I do think that some people were taking it a little bit too lightly. And um, the way that Arsenal play as well, Arteta actually has a decent record against the top six because they do like to sit back and counter. And that's what they did and that's what worked. Don't know if the players took it too lightly. Don't know um, if something to do with Lampard is wrong. But yeah, just a bit of a disappointing game to see. Um, not all completely negative there was a few good performances and that's why in my player of the season point scoring system I gave three players one point no one got more than one point just because it was a disappointing loss but I did give um, one point to Christian Pulisic Tammy Abraham and Callum hudson Adoy. so you can see on the screen how those points are tallying up um yeah they were just the bright sparks they were trying to make stuff happen Abraham was still good up front Pulisic was trying to make stuff happen I think he needs to sort of get a bit more used, you know, back to coming back from injury. You know, maybe his final ball's lacking a bit, but you can't, you know, um, give him lack of effort for trying. And um, hudson Odoi just completely changed the game when he came on. And it looked like maybe at one point we could actually come back to get a draw, but obviously that missed penalty, it was already quite late in the game. So, um, yeah, I mean, fair play to Arsenal. They deserve to win. I've been saying this for, like, two weeks to my mates that I think we're going to lose that game, to be honest. Um, I think that was probably a game that we deserve to lose. Whereas, I think against Everton and Wolves, who may be unlucky, to lose those games but um yeah against Arsenal um that just is how it was and now it makes us a bit more nervous going into this Villa game a Villa team that are flying on great form obviously there's only one day's rest between these two games so will we see a new 11 will we see some players stay is that a risk to fatigue and injury same with Villa what will we see Villa do obviously Tyrone Mings is suspended for this game which could be a good thing um 
Will Grealish start? He played the full game last game. I mean, it'd be good maybe first if he didn't, but I mean, who knows? And we do have six games um, between, or not six games, we do have six days between this game and the Man City game. So maybe that means that Lampard's going to think, oh, well, the players will have a big vest after the Villa game, so maybe he'll stick with Santa saying, guys, I'm not too sure, to be honest. And do let me know down below, guys, and what you think the lineup's going to be. But if I am going to try and predict it, just a quick note on the team news, by the way. No, no different injury news. ZX still won't be available, Lampard did say, for this game. Maybe we'll see him on the bench, who knows. But he definitely won't be starting, in my opinion. But who knows? I mean, he said that Chilwell and Reese James are big doubts for Arsenal, and they both started. So um, whether that was the right decision or not, who knows if Lampard's trying to play some sort of mind games. I don't know. If, if he is, then they definitely... Did not work, but um, yeah, I mean, I'm still going to go with Mendy in goal. Um, you know, he's a, he's a goalkeeper, and goalkeepers do need rest, but I do think you can maybe get away with playing him. Um, against Arsenal, I think maybe some people could put him into a bit of questioning for that goal against Saka. He's obviously quite tall, and you'd think maybe he could do better, but it was just a cross. No one was expecting that to sort of go in. The goalie, I guess, should have it covered anyway. Um, but yeah, it was just perfectly sort of looped over him. It's unfortunate. Um, the penalty, it's, you know... I mean, you can't really have a go at a goalkeeper for not saving a penalty. And then the um, second goal, the free kick, um, I maybe I, I watched him and I thought maybe he was a bit too over to one side because before Xhaka actually took the free kick, I looked at the goal and I saw the gap and I saw the wall and I just part of me thought that it was going in. I don't know, I just had this in my mind. I was like, this is going in and it actually did. So um, I don't know if he was maybe, if positioning was a little bit off there. He did almost reach it. I don't really know, but um, I wouldn't say it was an awful performance against Arsenal. He actually made one or two decent saves to stop it going even longer, so fair play. He'll start against Aston Villa. Hopefully we can try and get a clean sheet. That would be good, um, a good way to bounce back from conceding three goals. Um, Defence, this is tough. I am actually still... I'm going to go with the back line, basically, of Emerson, Thiago Silva, Kurt Zuma and Azpilicueta. Now, obviously, Rhys James wasn't... Um, it wasn't decided whether he was definitely fit or not for the Arsenal game, so there's no doubt in my mind that he's not going to play this game against Aston Villa. As for the quitter playing this game, could actually help some of the players going forward, having a bit more of a defensive-minded um, right back behind them. Um, Emerson, I think the same thing. Chilwell wasn't sure if he was going to play, and considering his fitness was maybe down, obviously only having one day's rest, I think Emerson's going to have to play this game. Thiago Silva's the tough one, because I don't know, because obviously his age, we know that we don't want to play him all the time. However, there wasn't any, you know, playing journeys you know, there's one day, and like I said, there's six days rest before City. He's a centre back, so maybe we see Thiago Silva start. I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't. It's kind of a 50-50 one for me. I do think Kurt Zuma will start though. Um, just maybe a bit less energy needed for you know the centre backs and stuff. So that's why I think that those are players that maybe could continue playing, but I'm not sure. Midfield, I've actually gone with Kovacic, Kante, and Kai Havertz now. I wouldn't be surprised if we actually saw Mount playing this game, just because we all know what Lampard's like, and obviously there's six days between this game and the City game. Um, I think Kovacic will start, only got 45 minutes against Arsenal, so I think he'll start. Havertz didn't start against Arsenal, so I think he'll start this game against Villa. Kante's a tough one, we know that of his fatigue, we know of his fitness. Um, it's a risky one. There's just something in my mind that thinks he's going to start. If he doesn't, I, I would understand it. I guess that would mean Jorginho would start. Maybe Gilmore, who knows? Um, because obviously they didn't play. I'm not too sure, though. I'm not even sure what to expect of the Aston Villa team, to be honest, guys. So I don't even know how I'm meant to prepare for that team um, in comparison to our team. So I have no clue how they're going to rotate or not. But um, I know, I've just gone with Kante. I've just got this feeling that he's going to play. Maybe with the gap between this game and the City game, we think that maybe we can have one or two days off after this and then maybe, um, you know, players can regain their fitness. I don't know, to be honest, but that's going to be my midfield. My front three is going to be Callum hudson Adoy on the right, Olivier Giroud up front and Timo Werner on the left wing. And I know, I know, Timo Werner hasn't had a good performance for us in a while, but it's just the issue, guys, is fitness. You know, Pulisic, I don't think, should start this game. Um, he, he's had some real injury woes with his hamstring and with stuff like that. I don't think he can play or start two games in a row with one day in between. I just don't think he can do it. hudson Odoi, I think, has to start this game. I mean, surely he was a great coming on against Arsenal. Looked amazing, by the way. Probably the best he's looked this season, bar maybe that West Brom game. He, he looks really um, on point in that game against Arsenal. Even though in maybe other games he scored, I just think he had a really good performance. Um, and with Azpilicueta behind him, um, that could definitely help him out. Um, I think Werner will be on the left. He had, only had 45 minutes against Arsenal. 
who knows, maybe him being subbed off at half-time is the mental boost he needs to try and pick himself back up. I don't know, I mean, it's gonna. I have no doubt that Werner's going to come good, guys, but... Um, you know, how long is it going to take? I don't know. Sort of Lampard did say in, the, in his post-match that, um, he, you know, Werner needs to sort of hurry up. And, I mean, that is right. That, that's true. He does. Um, and, yeah, I think he's going to have to start because ZX's not fit. I don't think we can risk Pulisic. And because Werner had 45 minutes, I just think that he'll be the one that does start this game. Maybe, potentially, we see Havertz occupy a wing and maybe Gilmore, Jorginho in midfield. I don't know. It depends how much... Lampard wants to rest players. Um, Giroud up front solely because um, Abraham probably needs just the rest from the day's break. Um, would love to see Abraham play, obviously, if there's more days um, break because he's been very good recently. The two goals against West Ham, the goal against Arsenal. But, um, yeah, probably just comes a bit too soon this game. So I do think Giroud can start. He's on decent form as well still, though. So hopefully he can pick up some goals. But it's really hard to predict this team, guys, just because of that day's gap. I think it's ridiculous, by the way. How can you have... One day gap. Why would they just not move today's games to like tomorrow or the day after? I honestly don't understand the thinking behind that. It's crazy to me. But either way, hopefully we can pick up the win. And hopefully we don't get an injury. Although it does seem probably quite likely that we will. Because of this ridiculous um, one day break. But that is my predicted lineup, guys. Do let me know in the comments down below what you guys want to see. Um, and going on to the scoreline, finally... Um, I think it's going to be a tough game. Like I said, Aston Villa are flying. Who knows what team they're going to start. Um, and obviously, we need to try and bounce back against Arsenal. I think, if I'm going to do a prediction, I think it's going to be 2-1 to us. I think it's going to be a tough game against an informed Villa side. Um, but it's a game that we should win. We're at home. Aston Villa, whilst doing really well, they're obviously not an amazing team. You know, People might bet on them to maybe start dropping off sooner. I'm not too sure. Hopefully, we can just beat them in either case and um, get the three points but that is going to be it for me guys do hope you all had a nice christmas by the way and are going to um enjoy the new year as well i will be bringing you guys my review of this match tomorrow so do stay tuned for that and as always guys do leave a like and subscribe for more chelsea fc content i hope you all do enjoy the rest of your day and i'll see you next time